say? I said we may wish to listen because he's he's in the middle of talking with somebody. Okay, hold on. Are we eavesdropping? We are eaves- Oh, yeah. We are dropping eaves. ...with Granite Rock, which is broadcast out of New Hampshire and in Wisconsin. Guys, great to have you on Conservatively Speaking WCRN. Hey, Pete. How you doing? I am doing great. We're having a great time here on WCRN. The calls have been lit up all day. We've talked about the debate. We've talked about Donald Trump's remarks last night about Megyn Kelly, which I think were disgraceful. Uh, We've talked a bit about Planned Parenthood, in which I was very, very passionate. And our last caller, and I want to stress what he said, not so much the compliments about me, which I like very much, (laughs) but he talked about the reason why Trump has inspired him is he said truths that other candidates and other and politicians have not. And I think that's really the. I mean, the celebrity is a big part about Trump, but the fact that he said some things aloud that others have. Everybody knows that people have not been willing to say makes a difference. I have had this conversation with my wife Pete, and she asked me that question. Your wife's name is Pete. No, my I'm, wife's name's not Pete. Okay. I've had this conversation with my wife, comma Pete, and. Um, <laughs> We, she asked me about it, and I said, well, you know, I said, he's standing up, he's speaking loudly about things that matter to real Americans, and he's not backing down. I said, people aren't used to that. People aren't used to politicians who aren't trying to save their political careers all the time, and I think a lot of people are drawn to that. Uh, good or bad, I think we'll find out. We have a couple of months left before the first primary in New Hampshire, but... I think that's it. I think it's absolutely right. He is standing up. He is a bright burning flame. If he burns out fast, he burns out fast. But he's bringing something to the table that I think is essential in a crowd this large. And I think that it's the fact that he's brought, I mean, the cats and Steinle murder, no one would be talking about if it wasn't for Trump. And as we said earlier, Trump could be naming these things every single day. But as far as what he did yesterday, the, on the, and I, can't, I still can't wrap my head around it that he said it, I've given a suggestion to him, and yes, I'd like 20 grand for the suggestion because it's a good one. What he should say bluntly is, I admit I caught a little bit of Joe Biden disease yesterday, and I ran, uh, and I ran the mouth a little bit, and I would, every time I, someone brings up that remark to Trump, he should say, I was wrong, I must admit I caught some Joe Biden disease. And, and spoke as I wouldn't be, and it would, and that highlights the fact that our friends on the left have given Biden a pass and have given Bill Clinton a pass. And if I was a, if I'm like uh, Ted Cruz or if I'm uh, Rick Perry or anyone else who's asked about Trump's remarks, I'd say that you know, I I think that Trump's remarks are pro- improper. I that he that he said. I think that they're over the line, and. They, they should put it over there, we sh- and they should put it this way. We should leave the mistreatment of women to Mrs. Clinton's husband. <laughs> that, is how, that is how Republicans should say. There's no place in this for the GOP. We should leave the mistreatment of women to Mrs. Clinton's husband. <laughs> Skip, you had a question. Yeah, um, I think what he's done is he's tapped into a lot of the anger that the grassroots base has, and I certainly share that, where... You know, they wanted a majority in the House down in D.C. We gave it to them. Then they wanted the majority in the Senate because they said we can't do anything without that. And we gave it to them. They've made all kinds of promises. And they have not delivered at all. And I think, uh, to use a business term, Trump is arbitraging that whole sense of anger. And it's really a case of uh, he. they have brought him upon themselves, to uh, quote myself, in that if they had done the job that they promised to do, he wouldn't have had a shot at this. But I'll tell you, if you want a little bit of a chuckle, Steve was going on, is that uh, he has a a a great solution for Mr. Trump in what he should have done last night and probably should do in the next uh, debate and you, so that he gets to be able to use his famous tagline from The Apprentice. That was Susan who said that. Oh, I thought it was you who did. No. no. Oh, Susan, I am Susan. sorry. Susan. That line. What's the line? Well, can, can I say something first, Pete? Um, I think Megan Kelly's a big whiner. <laughs> if, she, if she can't take that kind of talk, if she's not tough enough uh, to go toe-to-toe with this guy, then she ought to just shut up and sit down. Well, I, I did have a piece called... I think she was sitting Megyn down, but she ought to shut up. Trump inequality, which is a, and, that's a, and there's a point, but I think what Trump said last night was beyond, beyond the line. But there's something which, very which, which thing was it that he said? Excuse me. Bleeding from someplace else. 
That was one angry woman. <laughs> Come on. Why would you give her a pass? Oh, I'm not, I didn't give her a pass on the other things she said. I, went, I was very strong on it. I had a piece up earlier saying that Megan Trump, Kelly, Donald Trump equality, you can't have it both ways. You cannot uh, have the claim to be a strong woman and then have the vapors if someone hits you. He was <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They should have had a fainting couch there, maybe a little paper fan. And the, I mean, the other, the other uh, Trump hits on Kelly, I didn't have a problem with. And I think that if you're, if you're going, if you can't say I'm strong and I'm confident, and then be, claim, oh, how terrible! And the media was playing that card to the hilt, and that's a double standard. I couldn't stand it. But I think last night Trump crossed the line of decency. And as a person who claims decently decency, something had to be said. But you made a very good point about the the uh, Congress and so forth. In that, if they're not only not doing what they promised, but they're giving in without the fight. If Barack Obama is threatening a veto, make him veto. If the Democrats are threatening a filibuster, make them filibuster. And make people see them. Make the other side pay a political cost. Even if you can't do everything you want to do because of the rules, try, push it, and make the other side pay the political cost. I mean, that's just, why would you surrender without trying? And the GOP Congress has done this, and this is, this is stupidity. It's, it's not only breaking the promise, it's stupidity. Sometimes you're not going to be able to do what you want to do, but I'm not going to forgive stupidity, especially when you have a group of people who begged us for the money to give them this job. So we're going to we're gonna get to that quote real quick because it was really good. Go ahead. Oh, just um, had I been Donald Trump, because I'm certainly not Megyn Kelly. Had I been Donald Trump, when I got the first chance at the microphone, I would have said, I'm going to name Ted Cruz as my attorney general. I'm going to name Carly Fiorini as my secretary of state. I'm going to name Rick Perry as the head of uh, uh, personnel management. And Mr. President, you're fired. He would have had the room. And nobody would have been able to, to, to have taken the gloves off at that point. That would have been pretty good. If he, if he had thrown in Rand Paul as head of the Fed, then he <laughs> would have been the Fed. Nice about it. But, and, actually, and actually, I should point out that I think that Paul came in second in that... I, I think that Paul came in second in that debate, although everyone disagrees with me. I think Trump actually won that debate, and I think Paul came in second and Carson came in third. I have a long piece of, on that during my live blog of the debate. But, but the, I mean, the Trump remarks last night are totally separate from the debate. I think Trump won the debate. I think it's fair to say that Fox went after him. But it's also fair to say that Fox's main goal was ratings, and God, did they get ratings. But a lot of that comes from Trump. It could. Of it, it does. Could. It could. Um, we actually, we're going to have uh, David Bozell from For America on the program to do a little post-debate analysis in a little bit. Uh, so that will be part of our program. For those of you who are listening uh, to Pete's show, uh, my name is Steve McDonald. This is Skip Murphy. Susan Olson is our guest host. Normally Mike Rogers is here, but he's off doing personal things that are more important than this show. So uh, we're happy to have him doing that. But Susan has volunteered to come in and fill in for us. And uh, way, we are very, our, very happy to... Can you tell our to... audience what Granite Rock is? Because some in the audience may not know. Ah, Granite Rock, we are the leading conservative libertarian blog site here in New Hampshire. Uh, we started off with just two of us, thinking that you know maybe five people a week might read our stuff, to uh, actually having a rather loud voice here in New Hampshire, especially on the right. But make no mistake, the Democrats and the left are certainly tracking our every movement, trying to take us down. They've tried in the past, and we've basically said, yeah, screw you. Because we we don't do political correctness and we don't back down. We we actually just kind of you want to come after us, we start smiling and then you can see our fangs. Because we, unlike the D.C. Republicans, we fight back. Pete, I've I've, I've even been able to start a side business where I sell knickers to uh, to liberals and and Democrats and progressives <laughs> because when they get theirs all tied in a knot, I just sell them more. <laughs> Well, you should sell them pantsuits since this is the age of Hillary. And, of course, this, for the Granite Rock listeners, this show is Conservatively Speaking, which is uh, 7 to 10 a.m. on WCRN AM 830. I am guest I 50,000 watts in New England. I am sitting in for Mike Wade, who is the normal host, and Mike is a great conservative, a strong fella, 
businessman. He's out doing motorcycle things because he has a motorcycle business out there. Cool. So uh, obviously you should give Mike a listen and, of course, give the Tech Guy blog a listen. Now, we've got. To, I, I know we only have five minutes. Uh, in your evaluation, who won the debate? Um, I think in the first debate it was easily Carly Fiorina, and I would say that uh, Bobby Jindal came in second. Uh, Rick Perry, and he kind of second and third. In the first debate, I disagree with you. I think that Trump may not have won. He may not have lost much ground or maybe a little bit of ground. But I'll tell you, for the t amount of time that he got, Ted, Ted Cruz, and, and that's who, uh, you know, one of my favorites, did very well. The battle between Rand Paul and Chris Christie, I don't think did any either of them much good. I think Carson did uh, a credible job in showing that he's not un he's not like the others. But uh, it was hard, but I think the biggest loser of the night was uh, Jeb Bush. I agree with you on Jeb Bush. I agree with you with the one and two on uh, the first debate. I actually gave Santorum third place. I think I think that uh, Rick Perry didn't do as well until he talked until he, when he talks about te Texas. Rick Perry is the best person on any stage. When he's not talking about Texas, it's like he, it, a, you could, it's like a switch that goes on and off with him. But again, I disagree with you in terms of the first debate because I think you're talking about goals. And with the new, with the large audience there, I think Rand Paul and Chris Christie both had to define themselves differently than how the media had, and I think they didn't. That's why I consider. I think Christie came in fourth. I because he accomplish that goal but again this is the first inning of a nine inning game and trump's goal was to keep first place and i think he i think he accomplished what he wanted he may have given a lot of it away last night but in terms of the debate i think he accomplished what he wanted most of the people did except for bush i think bush Kasich is is a danger to bush especially because of the support up 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 north for him from the sununu crowd that's true. He does get a lot of support there. You know, uh, I'm looking at the uh, Instapundent poll the day after the debate, and Carly Fiorina is in first place, followed by Scott Walker and Ted Cruz, and then uh, Marco Rubio and Donald Trump. So people who are inclined to be conservative libertarians uh, responding perhaps to that. Uh, debate. I didn't watch the debate. I don't do debates like that. It's a cattle call. I think life's too short. But political operatives feel obligated to watch them because they want to report on them. I like to report on the reporting of the debate, which I find much more entertaining. I have to agree with you there. But again, I think that the standard is different because you had a different audience. You didn't have the guys like us as the primary audience. You had a lot of people who never watched debates at all or rarely watched them this early. And I think the standard was to get around the main, the way the mainstream media normally defines people. And I think that, uh, I think that Paul did well in that. I, th I think actually all of them did well. The only person who was mediocre was Bush. I think Bush was the only person who was mediocre. And I think Scott Walker was too reserved. I think but you're I being think too kind to Jeb Bush. <laughs> you know what we call a loser in Texas? I regret. I'm, I'm afraid to hear it off of 50,000 watts. But what we, do we call a loser in Texas? Yeah, yeah. A loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete. We're coming up on a hard break, so we're going to let you go. Week. So, Granite Grok, check them out, and we're happy to be on Grok Talk, and happy to have you on Conservatively Speaking. All right, thanks, Pete. We'll talk to you later. Take care. See ya. And we're going to break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Rock, 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 rock,